In Wales, the government's wanting to create bilingual citizens proficient in English and Welsh. So, they've made Welsh compulsory for all students. Could their system work here? Four New Zealand teachers received British Council Linking Minds scholarships to travel to Wales to see for themselves. And Carmen Parahi joined them. Some people think it is a dying language in, in, in Wales. They should come here and see what's happening to see, well, no, that's, that's not correct. Ocean Jones is very proud of his Welsh medium school, similar to Kurukopa for Māori schools in New Zealand. Children from 3 to 11 years old are taught all subjects in the Welsh language, even though most speak English at home. Four New Zealand teachers on a British Council Linking Minds scholarship were given the chance to see how compulsions helping to save the Welsh language come rag from extinction. The Welsh people have used law to support um, the use of the language or used it to build its status, used it to change public opinion. I think the, the law has really encouraged or helped education to do what it's doing with the language and to help with its revival or to help bring it in an equal status with the English language here. Ocean admits compulsion's controversial, but the demand for Welsh language education is growing in this anglicised region, Wrexham, close to England's border. This school is over capacity and some of these students will move to a new Welsh medium school next year. It's nice to see the demand for Welsh education in maybe traditional English-speaking areas of Wales and growing. In Nghymru, yn nes at farw, ond i bai am addysg cyfrwng Cymraeg yn y marni. It's a contentious view held by Anne Keane, the Chief Inspector of Schools and Training. Just 25% of schools are Welsh medium. 75% use English to teach, but must offer Welsh. If you live in Wales, then you're entitled to learn something about its culture, its history, and to learn something of its language. Ideally, uh, we'd like to see all pupils um, fully bilingual by the age of 16. Anne's department, Eston, measures education performance, including the quality and amount of Welsh language used in a school. She says education has a dark past. Pan oedd fy'n had yn mynd i'r ysgol gynradd, er bod ei bentref a'i deulu yn hollol Gymraeg, roedd yn rhaid iddo siarad Saesneg ac roedd yn cael ei gospi os na fydd yn siarad Saesneg. Anne says after World War II, the demand grew for a distinct national identity, separate from its encroaching neighbour, England, and Welsh medium schools were established. The time was right in Wales to bring Welsh in as, as a compulsory, as a mandatory part of the national curriculum by 1990. In other words, there was a political will. Anne believes all peoples living in Wales and New Zealand are entitled as citizens to learn the language of the land, part of the cultural heritage of the nation. When it comes to entitlement, that um, right uh, uh, it does not belong to any particular group, uh, whether it's a, a, an ethnic group or any other group, it belongs to the land of Wales. And I think that the arguments for compulsion are much more powerful and convincing than the arguments against compulsion. Professor Dermot Machiola Criost is an expert of minority languages and conflict. He says the shift to compulsory Welsh was difficult. The challenge that that posed for the Welsh language was that you needed teaching resources, teaching materials, you needed teachers in place that were able to deliver that expectation that all school children would be taught the Welsh language. The quality of the materials that you have available in Welsh, they pale a little bit by comparison to the quality of the materials that you have available in English. Despite the problems, he supports compulsion, saying it gives people access to the language and gives them a sense of inclusiveness. There are very good arguments for uh, making sure that, that all young people in New Zealand are allowed access to Māori as a part of their 
national identity, as a part of their heritage, as a part of the, the cultural package as a whole that makes up for New Zealand citizenship. And the only way of doing that then is compulsion. John Bright's school is an English medium high school in Claddagno, Northern Wales. It's just the same as being in a kura in a bilingual unit. Passion is there. They both want the same thing for their kids. It's just the amount of language that's been used. The school was built recently by a private investor on top of reclaimed dump land in an impoverished community. It's still legally bound to promote bilingualism, but concerns have been raised. Welsh medium education gets preferential government funding. There appears to be some form of um, discrimination in favour of the Welsh language and therefore again you have this polarising effect and so it isn't easy to address but the Welsh Government have made a commitment to you know, supporting the language and that's one of the ways of supporting it. Head teacher Graham Davies says compulsion's not universally popular. All schools I think in English speaking areas have to do a lot of hard work with the students and families convincing them that it is of value. Um, and if it's done badly in, in secondary schools in particular, it can be quite a negative experience. A traditional method that's used. He supports compulsion as a means of retaining comraig for now. It would be um, healthier and perhaps something that would be more common in the future if students opted for it because they could see the meaning and, and the value of it. Although these students are not fluent Welsh speakers, they're proud of learning Welsh. I think it's important for us to keep the Welsh yeah. language and to not let it die out. And it's important that in schools we learn it and... Keep it going. Yeah. I like just speaking it and I like being able to have a conversation with people when I work as well. I like being able to like reply back in the language. Everyone speaks English in Wales, but only one in five have some Welsh fluency. It, it is supposed to be everywhere, and I, I do believe that we're beginning to see it working. I don't think that I'd say it's a, a success right now. But it looks successful to these teachers, inspired to act on their return to New Zealand. And you've got an idea, a plan, to take back to New Zealand. Ko te whakaarokua puta mai, uh, me waiho te wiki o te reo Māori ki te taha, me whakatū i te marama. We can make it happen as we sh share the message through our organisations and wider and we start with what we can do and hopefully other people will come on board with us. The visit to Wales has convinced all four teachers to reo Māori must be compulsory in all schools. Hoki kua ki te ahau ngā whainga me nā kā tohutui atu kue ki te katoa uh, me kōrero i tēnei reo, me whakamahi i tēnei reo, um, ko ki te ngā hua o tērā. I think that as teachers, regardless of whether we're Māori or Pākehā or anything else, we have a moral and ethical responsibility to help protect te reo Māori. Thank you for coming to see us, Dale Hamdordin Wild. See you soon. Gwaelachi e na